Hello campus, welcome back to the channel where we're keeping IT simple because life is already complicated enough. Today I'm going to show you how to fix low disk space errors in Windows 10 using a feature called Storage Sense, which helps you find and delete files that are taking up a lot of space on your disk. And optionally, you can have Windows use OneDrive cloudback data to free up space on your drive, but keep the files local to your device. Confused? Keep watching and I'll show you how that works. If you're getting low disk space warnings in Windows, or you just don't have enough room to save your files, then you might find yourself in a situation where you can't carry on working, or Windows starts to run slowly because there's not enough disk space for normal operations. Having enough disk space, and I'd recommend a minimum of 20 gigabytes, is crucial for making sure that Windows runs smoothly, and to make sure that you stay productive so that you don't have to manage low disk space yourself. There are several different ways to turn on storage sense in Windows Windows 10. If you start running low on disk space, Windows 10 will prompt you in the Action Center to turn on Storage Sense. The other way is directly through the Settings app. So you can press the Windows key and I, then in the Find a Setting box, type Storage, and here you've got the option to turn on Storage Sense. Here on the storage page in the settings app, I can manually search for files that might be taking up a lot of space on the disk and delete them myself. And that's the first thing that I'm gonna do here. So in the storage window, you will see the category of files that's taken up the most amount of space on your disk at the top of the list. So here you can see other, so these are files that Windows isn't able to categorize. And then below that we have videos and apps and features. And we can see more categories here, but these are ones that are taken up insignificant amounts of space and probably don't need our attention. So I'm just gonna click back on show fewer categories. And because the other category appears at the top, that's probably the one that I want to deal with first. So I'm going to click on Other, and here you can see that this is divided now into various different folders. Now, what can I deal with here straight away? Now, documents, I'm not sure because maybe my documents I want to keep on the device, but I do know that VirtualBox VMs, this application I'm not using anymore, so I can probably safely delete these files. So I'm going to click on that folder, VirtualBox VMs, and it then opens up in Windows Explorer. And these are the folders that are taking up that space. Now I know that I can safely delete them, and there are a couple of ways to do that in Windows. So I'm going to select them by just dragging and dropping and then letting go on the mouse key, and now you can see that those folders are selected. Now if I press delete on the keyboard, this will delete the files, but potentially put them into the recycle bin. Now if the files are very big, Windows might tell you these files are too big for the recycle bin, do you want to permanently delete them? If you want to make sure that the files are deleted without going to the recycle bin, so remember the idea here is to save disk space, if we just put these files into the recycle bin, then that's not going to save us any space on the disk. If you want to make sure you just permanently delete them straight away, you can press Shift and the delete key on your keyboard at the same time, and this will delete the files without them going into the recycle bin first. But of course you need to make absolutely sure that you really want to do that. So I'm sure that I'm not gonna use these virtual box or virtual machines again, so I'm gonna press shift and delete, and you can see here that I get the warning, are you sure you want to permanently delete these four items? So I'm gonna click yes, and we can see now that those files have been deleted. So don't worry that you don't see those changes, the fact that we've deleted 80 gigabytes of files not reflected in the information here. The next time Storage Sense scans your drive, it will update the information and you will see that you have much more free space. So I can go through these other categories, of course, so maybe videos, let's view videos, and maybe I have some things here that I want to delete. I can maybe go into the catch clips here for my video editor and delete them. I'm not gonna do that right now. But as you can see, it's really easy to find which files are taking up a lot of space or just manually delete them or move them to another drive. 
So the other thing that I can do here, instead of manually looking for files that I might want to delete, is that I can use Storage Sense to scan the drive and delete things that are probably no longer needed, like temporary files, for instance, maybe old downloads that I have in my downloads folder. So all you have to do is click here, configure Storage Sense or run it now. So I'm going to click that and you can see here we've got various options. So let's have a look at temporary files. Now usually it's safe to delete these so there shouldn't be any problem to delete them. It's checked by default. In fact you don't need to change any of the settings here. You can scroll straight down to the bottom and click clean now if you want. It's designed to work without any interaction from you. But you can change these settings here if you want. So for instance I could change the files that are deleted from the recycle bin. So for instance by default it's set to files that are older than 30 days. I could change it to 60 or to 14 or maybe never. We've also got the option here is disabled by default but to delete files from my downloads folder. I'm going to set that to never, that's the default setting, but I could also change that to, again to 14 days, 60 days or whatever. What's interesting here is the locally available cloud content. Now if you're using OneDrive, whether it's the personal or business version of OneDrive, you can use Storage Sense to basically shift the data to OneDrive cloud back storage and free up space on the local drive. Now what's great about this is although you're shifting the data to your OneDrive space, you're actually keeping the files and the file structure that you see in Windows Explorer intact locally on the device itself. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to open Windows Explorer here and I'm going to move to a SharePoint library. Now SharePoint libraries are basically synchronized using the OneDrive client. It works exactly the same for OneDrive Personal or OneDrive for Business. So I'm going to click on this library here that I have synchronized to my local device. And you can see here in the status column for each folder whether the folder is located locally on my PC or whether the folder is in the cloud. And regardless of where it's located, I see the file structure and I can access the file. So for instance, if I click on M3 edited, I can see those files, even though some of them, like this one for instance, are not actually located on my PC. So if I come back to the root folder here, I can see that the M2 edited folder is located on the PC. And if I want to make sure that this is only stored in OneDrive and not on my PC, I can just right click and select free up space. And within a few seconds, the status will change for that folder to show that it's basically cloud only data. So if I open M2 edited, and let's say I wanted to open one of these files, I won't do that right now because it's quite a big file. If I double click on it to open it, then you'll get a little pop up in the action center saying that OneDrive is downloading the file. So you'll have to wait a few seconds while that file downloads from the cloud back to your local PC. Now if we come back to Storage Sense, what this does is it automates the process of clicking that free up space button basically. So for instance, you see this SharePoint library here. If I decide to run Storage Space now, it will basically set any folders and files that haven't been accessed for more than 60 days and it will hit the free up space button for me and make sure that that data is available in the cloud but not on my local PC. And at the same time, keeping those files and folders visible so I don't have to go looking for them on the internet somewhere. And you can see I can do that for all of my OneDrive content, whether it's my OneDrive for business, whether it's a SharePoint library, whether it's my personal OneDrive. And if I choose to do that, I just have to click clean now and that will start off the process of freeing up my disk space. And there's also a third option where I can have Windows automatically run Storage Sense for me. So if I click here Storage Sense on, and there are two different options that I have here to run Storage Sense. Now the default is during low free disk space. So Windows can detect that my disk is running low on space and then it will say, okay, so now I need to run Storage Sense according to the settings that I have configured here. So that might be to delete temporary files, maybe to purge old files from my downloads folder and maybe by also deleting data that has OneDrive cloud back storage. So that will kick off automatically during that low free disk space event. 
Alternatively, you can run this on a schedule and that basically helps you to make sure you never get in the situation where you have to stop work because you've run out of disk space. So if I click on the menu here, I can set it to run every day, every week or every month. Of course, the disadvantage to having it run on a schedule is that it might need to do some work on the disk in the background, potentially slowing you down a little bit. So you can choose between those two options and depending on the size of your disk and how often you have problems with low disk space, if you have a large disk and you don't really have problems often with low free disk space, then I would leave it set at the default setting. If you frequently run out of disk space, then I would consider setting it to run on a schedule. So that's it. If you're having problems with low disk space errors or just need more space on your disk to save your work, then please have a look at Storage Sense, set it up or run it manually, whatever you decide. If you found the video useful, then please give it a like. And I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification for similar tips and tricks on Windows 10. But before I go, here are a couple of other videos that you might find useful. So check them out and I'll see you next time.